Welcome back to the Urban Review. Hear about the stories that made headlines this past week. Jumping back to last Sunday, a local church is moving its Sunday services to Santa Barbara High School. Starting in July, Reality Santa Barbara will conduct Sunday prayer services at the school's auditorium. Reality signed a one-year contract with the school district for just over $60,000. Reality had a contract with Santa Barbara City College for the last 20 months. And a big Sunday night of fundraising for the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Search and Rescue Team. Local celebrity Joan Carbett and his country Western Rock Band headline a benefit concert for the team. Corbett lives in the Santa Ynez Valley. The band played to a crowd of people at the Figueroa Mountain Brewery in Buellton. All of the money from ticket sales will go directly to search and rescue. And a small plane went down in Westlake Village and another crashed in Calabasas Monday afternoon in a mid-air collision that killed two people. Investigators say the crashes appear to be related. An FAA official says the incident involved two Cessna 172s. FAA radar data shows the planes collided about 8 miles northeast of Ventura at 2 in the afternoon. The first plane landed on the Westlake Golf Course and the second crashed in the rugged terrain of Calabasas, sparking a one-acre fire. Three passengers aboard the plane in Westlake Village had minor injuries. The National Transportation Safety Board is now in charge of the investigation. Also on Monday, a two-car crash shut down Delavina Street in Santa Barbara for about an hour, backing up morning traffic. It happened about 10 in the morning. The driver of a white Kia hit the side of a parked van on the busy one-way street. Residents heard the bang and rushed out to help the driver. Witnesses say the female driver mentioned that she had been driving since very early in the morning and was tired at the wheel. The driver had minor injuries and was taken to Cottage Hospital. The owner of the parked van is a construction worker who had to unload his tools before he was towed away. On Tuesday, a scary wake-up call for people living in one Carpinteria neighborhood. The Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department sent out a reverse 911 message urging people to stay inside and lock their doors while deputies search for two suspected car thieves. A sheriff's deputy spotted a suspected thief parked at a 7-Eleven in Carpinteria around 12.30 in the morning. The driver led the deputy on a brief chase before getting out of the car and escaping through a nearby neighborhood. He was later caught and arrested in Ventura. However, his accomplice is still on the loose. The driver faces a number of charges, including vehicle theft and resisting arrest. His girlfriend, Taryn Jankovic, is also wanted by police. If you have any information on her whereabouts, call 684 5405. An MTD official decided to postpone the elimination of bus route 22 in Santa Barbara. It's the route that goes from downtown to El Encanto Hotel and up the mission. MTD board members considered changes to the route, including getting rid of it altogether to save money. However, the board got an earful from riders. The board voted to wait six months to look at other options. Members want to see if the new El Encanto Hotel will bring more riders. The board also voted to add more buses to routes serving UCSB and Santa Barbara City College. Also on Tuesday, the newest baby giraffe at the Santa Barbara Zoo enjoyed some time outside for the first time. Sunshine, who was on surprisingly sturdy legs, joined Dane, who was born 12 days prior. Zoo officials say the two are getting along well with everyone, including their mothers, Audrey and Betty Lou. The father, Michael, is being kept in a separate area nearby for now. The two young giraffes will be in the exhibit on a day-to-day -day basis. Guests who saw them together for the first time said it was an amazing sight and often they were just a few feet away from the public viewing area. Moving on to the middle of the week, someone painted a giant swastika in the middle of the San Isidro Road and Jemison Lane Montecito intersection. The image is not only frightening to some folks, but others are just outraged. Santa Barbara sheriffs received several phone calls from concerned citizens. Sheriffs believe it happened early Tuesday morning. Nearby street signs were also whited out with what appears to be the same paint. The Santa Barbara County District Attorney says that this is not legally a hate crime unless it turns out the swastikas were painted near a known Jewish person's home or event. But members of the Jewish community say this was a hateful act. 
By Wednesday morning, cleanup crews had removed the swastika, but the street signs were still covered in paint. Also, Jerry Cox has a new ally. Cox is the man tased and arrested by a Santa Barbara police officer who thought he was breaking into a car. It turned out the car was his. Activist Vincent Ward Stahlberg met Cox for the first time on Wednesday. Police say Cox did not cooperate with the arresting officer and never said he owned the vehicle. But witnesses on the scene say Cox clearly yelled out the car belonged to him. It was even recorded on video. Now, Ward Stahlberg plans to help Cox file another complaint. The activist says police may try to discredit him because he has a criminal record that includes assault. Both men accuse the officer of racial profiling. The activist also says he plans to bring Cox to federal court in Los Angeles to file a civil rights complaint. Moving ahead to probably the biggest news of the week. A massive fire broke out at the Conejo Grade in Camarillo Thursday morning. The spring's fire burning in Ventura County is showing no signs of letting up and has already burned at least 28,000 acres. This massive fire has burned all the way to the Pacific Ocean. PCH was shut down in both directions, and new evacuations were in place for Deer Creek Road, Yerba Buena Road, Sycamore Canyon, La Jolla Canyon, and Burome Ranch. Students and staff at California State University Channel Islands scrambled to evacuate. Fire crews from Santa Barbara County were dispatched to help out in the spring's fire. So far, 75% is contained. Eight firefighters have been injured. All have been minor injuries, and containment is expected to be by late Monday night. Also, an air quality warning has been in effect for Ventura and Santa Barbara counties. Smoke from the Springs Fire is creating poor conditions throughout the southern Santa Barbara County, and health officials warn everyone, especially people with asthma, lung, or heart disease, to limit their time outdoors and to avoid all exercise outside. And on Saturday, Yogurt Land celebrated its grand opening in Goleta by giving away free frozen yogurt and toppings. Goleta Mayor Roger Aceves attended the ribbon cutting ceremony, and for one dollar, families got to spin a wheel for prizes. This Yogurt Land is the second location for owner Zhu and Amanda O, oh, who also operate a Yogurt Land in downtown Santa Barbara. O oh said he is delighted to finally bring the small franchise to Goleta after finding success at his Santa Barbara shop. The 5880 Calle Real location was chosen mainly for its large parking access for customers, said O. Oh. He and his wife are excited to bring the city of Goleta an economic boost with their tasty frozen delights. And finally, an ugly traffic accident sent two people to the hospital Saturday afternoon. It happened at the intersection of Carrillo and Castillo Streets. A truck traveling down Castillo at full speed ran a rate light and collided with a Chevrolet Cavalier going up Carrillo. This resulted in the truck rolling over. The occupants of the truck self-extricated and are fine. However, the driver and passenger of the sedan had to be taken out with the jaws of life and transported to Cottage Hospital. Their injuries are unknown but not life-threatening. Streets had to be shut down a block in each direction to accommodate first responders. It's still unclear as to why the truck ran the red light, but Battalion Chief Mike DuPont strongly cautions drivers to be alert when driving, and pedestrians should be aware of traffic and busy intersections. Moving on to upcoming events, Women on Wheels No Drop Ride. Bring your bike and helmet and practice group riding and safety skills with the local Calera cycling team on Tuesday, May 7th from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at Whole Foods Market, 3761 State Street in Santa Barbara. And also, Coffee with a Cup. The San Barbara Police Department invites you to have Coffee with a Cup Wednesday, May 8th from 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the Good Cup at 1819 Cliff Drive in Santa Barbara. The cost is free and all ages are welcome. The Rock and Roll Paper Ball. Nibble Fish and Chips, Sip Firestone Pale Ale, see a fashion show, listen to cover band The Limit, and 
bid on auction and raffle items on Friday, May 10, from 6:30 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Veterans Memorial Building at 112 West Cabrillo Boulevard in Santa Barbara. The cost is $100, and the age limit is 18 and above. And in Buellton, the Buellton Brew Fest. The Buellton Chamber of Commerce is gearing up for the second annual Buellton Brew Fest, which focuses on craft beer and the art of making beer. This is on Saturday, May 11, from noon to 4 p.m. at Riverview Park in Santa Rita Foothills in Buellton, California. The cost is $35 to $45, and the age limit is 21 and above. And a free dental and medical clinic. The Santa Ynez Travel Health Clinic will team up once again with the Army Reserves and the National Guard to. Provide limited dental and medical services free of charge for anyone unable to access basic health care due to lack of insurance. Saturday, May 11, at 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Santa Ynez Travel Health Clinic at 90 Via Juana Lane in Santa Ynez. The cost is free, and all ages are welcome. And for Mother's Day. There's Mother's Day wine pairing. Join Santa Barbara Winery for a special tasting featuring local wines and brownies from local baker Heidi Whitney on Sunday, May 12, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Santa Barbara Winery on 202 Anacapa Street in Santa Barbara. The cost ranges from $10 to $15. And that does it for this week's episode of the Urban Review. Join us next week for a new episode.